yes today i'll spend about uh, 15 20 minutes here and today we'll have a lot more hands on uh, we'll be there personally going around there won't be any video lecture today so most of you I, some of you we heard were able to create it create the courses contents but today we will just help you uh, do the tasks we'll be there with you my project staff and i will be there uh, professor sachin also will be there so before we go into uh, what we are going to do today uh, the another important activity of moodle is yesterday whatever i told you is one way interaction that is just information sharing whatever you are putting up it's like a web page people just come and download something and consume it but uh, moodle is much more powerful you can get students to do activities and you can grade them okay so i'm going to quickly tell you the capabilities of what is possible in online grading we will not do that today tomorrow we will do it in detail but today i'm just going to give an overview of what is possible okay tomorrow i will we'll exactly go through those uh, steps and see how you can grade uh, students online again in my dashboard i have kept uh, moodle 101 is what we did yesterday moodle 201 is grading okay so this course there are two kinds of gradings that you can do in moodle one is simple assignments in which people students submit pdfs or excel or some other documents which you download and you view it and you give the marks online so it is exactly equivalent of submitting paper copies to you in your office and you are grading them marking them and giving it back exactly that one is replaced by something that you do online that is the simplest manual grading that you do the second one is automatic grading so automatic grading are computer based exams so you give the question you give the correct answer okay it could be it's all objective type it could be multiple choice it could be fill in the blanks it could be some uh, mathematical formula and so on and then but each has got an objective answer which can be evaluated by a computer and so when the student answers that they are automatically given the marks okay. so manual grading and automatic grading are two very important activities that you can do in moodle so i'll just tell you what can be done in simple assignments so simple assignments are they submit online text they can type it online or they can upload a file so in this i can ask write a paragraph about your experience in this uh, workshop okay so that can be an assignment i can also ask them to submit files okay offline assignment is also a variation of this online assignment suppose you are conducting a pen and paper examination okay which is conducted say mid semester exam or end semester exam or lab exam in which they don't submit anything online but they do it on pen and paper and you sub, you correct the you correct it and give marks you can use moodle to show your students the marks okay so instead of everybody coming and seeing uh, 150 people coming and seeing your marks you can display the marks of individual candidates to only them otherwise you will have to put a notice board where all the roll numbers and marks are there which is not a correct thing to do because everybody's marks is not everybody else so by using moodle you can expose individual marks only to that person alone okay so there are two ways you can use it one is where they submit online pdf or text or ppt or whatever you want you can evaluate it okay and give marks or pen and paper which is which is what i have written as offline assignment pen and paper assignments or examinations which you evaluate by pen and paper and the marks 
you put it in an excel sheet and then upload it in Moodle. So, individually each of those uh, uh, students can go and see their marks. So, this is this activity, this is uh, yesterday we saw resources. So, these are activities. So, in these activities, it is called activity because students actively participate in doing something with the system, not simply download something. Resources is what they download or they just consume by looking at videos and so on. This is they participate actively. And the most interesting part of Moodle is you can conduct automatic grading, which I said just now, it is an objective type question. So, I will show you how it looks. So, it is CBT means computer based test. So, in this in this course I am a student. So, I can see that the quiz opened today at uh, 433 and I can attempt the quiz now ok. So, I can have a start time and end time of the quiz. I can tell that ok it is uh, half an hour quiz or 3 hour quiz whatever it is and say I, I attempt. So, it may not be very clear for you. So, these are the questions here. So, this question number 1, if I scroll down, there is a quiz navigation box. So, the question 1, there are 3 questions in this quiz. So, in this question is a simple mathematical question. A train covers a distance of 3 kilometers in 18 minutes. What is the speed? Ok. What is the speed in kilometers per hour? Now, this question is set such a way that each student will be seeing a different number. Ok. Not every student will be seeing the same number. So, one student will see it as 3 kilometers in 18 minutes, somebody will say 4 kilometers in 2 minutes ok. So, this kind of automatic programming you can do in Moodle. So, if you are worried that student might copy each other, they cannot at least copy the final answer. If at all they have to copy, they have to co know the ent entire formula for calculating the final answer ok. So, this is very useful for uh, courses particularly in engineering and mathematics, engineering and science, you can use this kind of uh, questions where each student sees a different numerical problem. It is not the same problem that everybody sees. So, that is a very powerful thing. Apart from that, there are other standard objective types like multiple choice. You have four choices, you can choose one choice or more than one choice depending on the type of question or fill the blanks which is typically used in uh, of course, in science you can use, but it is more common to use fill in the blanks questions in humanities languages where you want to give a paragraph and ask them what are the possible uh, words that you can fit in there right. So, these are very co three common questions I have told you, there are another uh, 10 different types of uh, questions that you can do, you can do match the following, you can give a picture and you ask them to identify different parts, parts of the picture. Like for example, say you give a diagram and you mark each quantities of 1, 2, 3, 4 and you give choices and they drag and drop these things on the picture. So, there are lots of options that are available where you can uh, interactively allow the students to participate in this uh, activities ok. So, I am, so this is just to give you overview of what is possible. Uh, the reason we had asked you to bring a set of problems is that those of you who want to go into this in detail, tomorrow we are going to show that in detail, but tomorrow if you do not want to do the detail problem,ing uh, problems like the math problem I showed you. This is that detailed mathematical problem. If you do not want to do this, we can at least do the simple problems tomorrow, which is like fill in the blanks, multiple choice and so on ok. So, this is what we will be doing tomorrow. For today hands on session, let me go back to my dashboard. So, many of you, uh, some of you had complained that you are not able to see the course which you have created. So, the course you are not able to see because the course is not active yet. So, you have to go to future, if you click on future you will see the course whatever you have been uh, made as a teacher. So, I have created a dummy course here. So, today you will be uh, modifying your course if you have not already done. The following activities, the list of activities that you will be doing is as follows. If you click on this, 
you can find the list of act. First what we are going to do is change the start date and end date, okay, which is what all the things I had described yesterday, but we will do it hands on today. And by default it is there in topic wise, we are going to make it week wise. So, once we have state changed the start date and end date, we can uh, make it week wise and we are going to add the course syllabus. Now, the course syllabus is uh, is what you have uploaded in Google Sheets, okay. So, that that is there in this okay we should make a copy of that in this file so we have made that available here through a spreadsheet and the files both of them are here so if you search by use your first name and institute the let me dismiss this yeah so this is the problem set you have posted, solve problems, course content. So, you can simply click on this uh, Google Drive and then you will, uh, you can download this to your uh, local computer where you are going to work and then upload it from there, ok. So, this can be done or if you are not able to see that, the list of files are also there here. So, each of you, you have uploaded. So, say solve problems. So, here it is this form. If you actually go and click on this, you can see a list. And uh, if you know the uh, if your username, and you can simply search for that. Uh, sorry, your uh, it will be your name will be here and you can just download from here and then upload it. So, all the files that you uploaded are available in this Google Drive, you can use that. So, these are the things that we will be doing, just a minute. So, first we will change it to uh, start date, end date, make it weekly, then add contents. Okay, so, the contents which we are going to you uploaded is there in Google Drive, you will uh, download it here and then add it and uh, if time permits, you can also create a discussion forum. So, discussion forum is where you let students to interact among themselves and ask questions that you can uh, reply to. So, these 5 activities we will go hands on. So, let us all go to, uh, since the number of uh, participants are less today, uh, we will go to SL1 or which is better? We will go to SL, SL2 first and if uh, still overflows, we will go to SL1. So, let us move on to SL2 now.